What? I hope you have your calculators ready because today we're talking about big numbers. So Apple is doing the most out here. It's busy flexing on us and actually they release a new update and it's not an official update it's another release candidate and at this time it's not release candidate number one or release candidate number two but it's rc number three that's the update that we have here today and in this video i'm going to be reviewing that sponsored by clean my mac x What's up guys, welcome back to HMHT, I'm your host Ben of course and today Apple released macOS Pixel RC number 3 and for me on my MVP that you see here it actually came in as a small file and it came in at around 2.18 gigs. Now I'm updating from release candidate number two and if you're going to be updating from any prior or earlier version than RC2 then your update size or file size is going to be different from this. So this is how it came in for me and if we go to the about this mark section just to see the software changes that came with this update you can see the build number that we have here 20d64 so before that we had 20d62 so this rc number three or release candidate number three that we have here has been incremented by two not much of a change it sort of speaks about the changes that we can expect with this update and if we just go into the storage section just to see how much this system or this update is taken up it just takes a moment to load and as you can see there it's done calculating and the system is taken up 16.21 gigs so that speaks a lot when it comes to what we can expect or the changes that are typically going to be there with this update that it, it actually isn't a lot and by the way this update is available to developers and to public beta tests so irregardless of the profile you have you can actually update to this rc number three should you wish to now usually when apple releases a release candidate that doesn't mean that that's exactly going to be the final product a release candidate is a beta that is in transition that basically needs to be inspected and if it passes inspection it will be deemed final but in this case you can tell that from all the release candidates that we've been having there's always something that's coming up from time to time that's why we went from two to rc number three and this is not something that's typical but hey this is happening and i would like to think why apple released this rc number three instead of the final build which i was actually looking forward to perhaps today is because there is a pseudo vulnerability with this mac os whereby a local user could gain root privileges on this mac os so that seems to be i think what they wanted to patch up it's quite a serious bug or issue that is here still on mac os however apple didn't address this issue directly usually what apple does when there's an issue to an update especially when it poses like a security threat or it's a serious one they usually won't say anything they keep their mouth shut and then after some time that's when you find out that oh apple released a new security note or some notes saying that oh by the way it's important that you update to mark West pixel 11.2 because there's this security issue that is there and if you don't you are at risk so just like what happened to ios 14.4 so if you go to my community tab just to illustrate an example of this so i posted that it's important an important message and it says that it's important to update to ios 14.4 because according to a security support documents shared by apple there were canal and webkit vulnerabilities affecting all iphones and ipads running on ios 14 and ipad os 14. the canal vulnerability could allow a malicious application to elevate privileges and apple says it is aware of a report that the issue may have been actively exploited so that is also a reason why you should actually update to the latest available software update because after an update has been out for some time there's always shortcomings and ins and outs so it's always important to update to the latest available update and i believe with mac os pixel it's the pseudo vulnerability issue that they are trying to patch it up and then after some days when this mac os pixel 11.2 becomes live perhaps next week tuesday you might see apple releasing some security notes to tell us about what was going on with this update and also by the way if you haven't yet updated to ios 14.4 as you can see there's a security issue whereby 
a malicious app could elevate app privileges. That means that certain applications will be given privileges or they will be able to carry out tasks that you haven't given permission to. And that's, that's a little bit on the higher end on the risk scale. So hopefully you update. And I believe with macOS Pixel, this is what is going on and why we are seeing so many betas. Other than that, there isn't a lot of change from release candidate number two to RC number three. In fact, the things that this update talks about that it aims at resolving are exactly the same as RC number two. So you have the Mac mini whereby it was having issues when it comes to HDMI to DVI connection. So hopefully this is finally fixed with this update. And then also you have edits to pro raw content within the photos app that we're not saving this update addresses that issue and if you're disabling iCloud for your desktop sometimes this would completely switch off your iCloud drive so that is also addressed with this update and also this update addresses an issue whereby system preferences may not unlock for certain Mac administrators so that has also been resolved with this update now when it comes to some of the bugs that I'm seeing on some forums and a bit of uh, feedback from some of you. The first one, and I think the only major one that seems to be persistent at this time has to do with airport auto switching. So you can actually go from the Mac to the iPhone and you know, it will actually switch over or transition over smoothly. However, coming from the iPhone to the Mac, it's still an issue at this time, but from the iPhone to other devices, that is okay. But however, when you involve the Mac in the transition or switching process, then that's where the chain sort of breaks. So that is one of the issue. And the other issue that I experienced after I updated, I was actually trying to see how good this update is on performance. And I had a crash on my Geek Bench 5 scores. I don't know if this has to do with Geekbench itself or it's a macOS issue, but that's basically the issues that I hear with this update. Now, for those of you that are asking me if I'm having any issues when it comes to external displays or my peripheral devices, I'm actually not having any issue at all. I mean, I'm using an Intel Mac, but perhaps for M1 Macs, that's a completely different story. But for Intel so far for me, I'm happy with what I'm getting. My peripheral device is good. My external displays, this is good. And also most of my workflow I do on a main display and this is just like a backup. So I'm not having any issues at all when it comes to external devices and Safari, Sometimes I notice that when you're going through pages, scrolling up and down, Safari can sort of be glitchy from time to time. That is also another bug that I noticed. When it comes to Bluetooth, I believe that Bluetooth should be completely fixed right now because it hasn't been mentioned, irregardless whether you are using M1 or Intel Mac. So that is a good thing. I believe it was more severe on the Mac mini because on the Mac mini, you don't have this hinge here that you can use as your monitor. You don't have the display here, right? And also you don't have the trackpad just in case your Bluetooth stops working. So for the Mac mini, this update hasn't been the greatest, but I believe with this update, Bluetooth should be okay. And peripheral devices, I believe this release candidate number three is trying to like mitigate whatever is causing that issue. Could be a hardware issue whereby Apple tries to fix this through a software. And if it doesn't work, then don't be surprised when you see like sometime from now, Apple recalling some Mac mini devices if that is an internal card or board issue within those devices. Now, when it comes to performance, I had good news to show you. So I did run Geekbench 5 after updating and I'm quite impressed with the numbers that I got on this release candidate number three. Seems like performance wise and battery wise, they're getting certain things correct. So on this release candidate number three, on single core in RAM Geekbench 5, I got a score of 751. And for multi-core, I got a score of 3087. That is above the scale. And also, if we were to compare this to what I had previously on RC number two on CPU. So for single core, I had a score of 749. And for multi-core on RC number two, I had a score of 3084. So those are some of the highest numbers I've ever had on this macOS Pixel 11.2. And as you can see, since 
RC number one. Number one, RC one was right here. Number two is there and number three is there. So seems to be going, it's on an upward trend. It's more like GameStop, the stock that's breaking the internet at the moment. So performance wise on CPU, it's great. Now, when it comes to GPU, the same is true. So I ran Geekbench 5 just to see how good it's performing. And when it comes to this RC number three, I had a score of 17,829. And previously on RC number two, I had a score of 17,706. So it's good when it comes to both CPU and also when it comes to GPU. Just keep in mind that when I'm doing these Geekbench scores, I'm doing screen recording at the same time. So that sort of affects my figures. If you want to get the true non-affected figures when it comes to Geekbench 5, just try to run it without doing any other thing or screen recording your screen, you will get higher numbers. But for me, this is how RC number three is performing compared to RC number two. And uh, so far, I'm liking the performance that I'm getting right here. Now, when it comes to battery, the same is true. So if we go into our system preferences and then go to the battery section, and go to where it says last 10 days. So you can see the last 10 days that I have here. So as you can see here, today is actually a Thursday and you can see the percentage that I actually had on RC number two. So I was actually getting about seven hours of screen on time using about 80% of charge. So that is among the highest figures that I have ever got. And on Wednesday, I'm not sure what happened there. I sort of uh, know that I used my Mac quite a bit but i'm not sure but then you can see for today that i'm actually getting about eight and a half hours using about 80 percent of charge so battery is a little bit on the high end and after i test this extensively i'll be able to give you a follow-up video of how the true battery performance is and also if there are any new features or new important security issues that needs to be addressed other than that that's about it for me just a reminder remember to update to ios 14.4 if your mom doesn't know help your mom update if your granny doesn't know help them out other than that stay safe and i'll see you in the next video very soon peace